most frequently asked questions about my ride is how I plan what roads I'm going to be taking, uh, how I plan my route, generally speaking. And uh, so I thought I'd make this little video to explain it to you in great detail. So there are three steps to planning a good set of roads and the overall route uh, that I take on this ride. Step one, the uh, first step could be described basically as the idea, uh, the overall concept of where I want to go in the grand scheme of things and uh, the most direct way to get there. So my ride is a 48 state ride to uh, over 10,000 miles and that requires of course a lot of roads and it's way too complicated and way too detailed of a planning process to try to plan it all uh, all the roads up front so the first step is just to have this overall picture of what states I want to get to and what part of what states I want to get to in which order uh, and work from there. The second step is primarily involved with finding people along the overall general idea of where I want to go who will let me stop for a night and uh, have some sort of fenced area that Apollo can stay in and uh, and will allow me to stop for the night. If you are interested in what is involved with being a host I will put a link to that in the description below. Uh, once I have offers for places to stay uh, that are usually 10 to 15 miles apart and certainly no more than 20, then we, uh, we have a plan. Uh, step three is the specific roads. I don't pick the roads I will be traveling until the night before I decide to take them, and sometimes not even until I'm actually on them because I very often change my plan for which road to take as specifics about those roads become more clear in person. Uh, so basically, I'm looking on Google Maps to figure out the most direct way to get from wherever I've left that morning to wherever I'm going for that evening stay, and also to do that on the quietest roads possible. So it's a balancing act between quiet and short. Sometimes I will take a slightly longer route if the roads are a lot better, uh, and sometimes I will take busy roads if it's just too many miles to take a quieter road. I also sometimes look at terrain. Uh, if it's going to be exceptional, exceptionally hilly going one way uh, versus another and otherwise is similar types of roads and mileage, then I will obviously take the flatter route. However, that is a minor consideration. I mostly just want the shortest and the quietest roads. I do that by looking at Google Maps uh, and looking at what the roads are called and what, how big the line is on the map. Uh, thinner lines are quieter roads typically, although sometimes I have been unpleasantly surprised to find that what should be a quiet country road is actually a major route for a local mine or gravel pit or oil well or business with a lot of trucking involved with it. Uh, but generally speaking, if you look at Google Maps closely, you can see by the thickness of the line and also by whether or not the road has a number designated to it, such as a highway number, a state road, or a county road number, uh, those tend to be busier than the unnumbered roads in most states. And uh, also you can look at if it is going to be a road that is straight through, 
versus one that's just a short bit of road and then you have to turn and then you have to turn. And, uh, if it's not something that would be convenient for people who are driving or especially for trucks uh, to take that road versus another road nearby uh, that um, would be easier for trucks, then you have pretty well assured that there won't be too much traffic on that road. Uh, as far as the type of traffic, I'm mostly looking for what will not be a truck route. Uh, regular commuter traffic doesn't bother me so much, although I of course prefer a road like this that doesn't really have any cars on it. Uh, but if I have to take a pick between a busy road that's just passenger vehicles, personal vehicles, uh, versus one that also has trucks, I will always take the one without the trucks. I, sometimes I can get good local advice about what roads to take, but since most people giving the advice only use them in their cars, it's sometimes not very accurate because what they are looking for is not the same as what I am looking for, and they don't necessarily realize uh, maybe even that there are quieter roads because they don't take them because they're in a car and so uh, they're perfect for a horse because people in cars don't realize that they have these quieter options with lower speed limits and less direct maybe. Uh. Finally you're probably wondering about cities versus country. Obviously less traffic uh, is more likely to be the case when you ride on uh, country roads versus city roads. However, I do ride through towns and cities quite often. I don't necessarily avoid them. And so even within a town or city, it's possible to find quieter roads. It usually involves cutting through neighborhoods uh, instead of taking the main road through the town. Uh, so I cut through a lot of neighborhoods or take a lot of neighborhood uh, subdevelopment roads that run parallel to the main road. Uh, so that's how I plan my roads. Thanks for watching. Check back soon for more interesting videos about how to travel by horse and about our adventures uh, along the road, riding around the country. Check out my blog at centaurride.org and uh, of course my Facebook and Instagram pages of which I will have links in the description below. If you have anything in particular you would like to see a video about, please comment and let me know. And uh, so until next time, bye!